You're listening to The Artist Athlete, episode 114. This podcast is dedicated to circus. It's a place for professionals in the industry to share their stories, viewpoints, and information, and a place for outsiders to get a sneak peek into this world. Hey, friends, fans, and foes, I'm Shannon McKenna. I'm the host of the Artist Athlete Podcast and the founder of theartistathlete.com. I'm so excited for this episode today. It is the end of my four-part icons series Four interviews with four people who have made their mark on circus in the most iconic of ways. And this person is probably the most iconic of all the iconic people. Not that it's a competition or anything, but if it was, she might just win. But before I get into introducing her, shout out as always to my most iconic Patreons, the people who choose to give small amounts of money each month to help this podcast continue to make it free and accessible for everyone, even you listening. So if you've been a friend, fan, or foe of the podcast for a while, and you keep meaning to become a Patreon, but you you keep forgetting or you haven't quite gotten around to it yet, let this be the time. Come on. Uh, it's as little as $3 a month, and you get great behind-the-scenes sneak peeks. You get episodes early, you get a podcast sticker, and so much more. So go to patreon.com slash the artist athlete and sign up today. That's patreon.com slash the artist athlete. Please, please, please. It helps the podcast so much. It helps it exist, really. So patreon.com slash the artist athlete. <laughs> my guest today, oh my God, I'm so excited. I worked with this woman in, I'd heard stories about this woman for years. And then I had the pleasure of working under her. She was my boss when I taught uh, aerial straps at the San Francisco Circus Center. Her name is Elena Panova. She was born in Marum, Russia. And she started training at the age of 14 in the amateur circus club of her native town, tiny town. 100 kilometers away from Moscow, uh, no circus family, totally self-made woman. Three years later, she was accepted as a student at the Moscow Circus and Variety College, and you'll hear in the interview what that acceptance process was like. It is rigorous. She specialized as an aerialist and graduated in 1985. Under the guidance of the legendary coaching team of Teresa Durova and Victor Forma, she graduated a groundbreaking swinging trapeze act that combined her outstanding acrobatic with balletic ballet informed forms and drastically changed and renewed the specialty. Elena made her professional debut that same year, touring the Moscow Circus in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. And in 1987, she won the gold medal and the French Ministry of Culture Award at the Paris Festival Mondial du Cirque de Demain and the gold medal at the 1988 All-Union Circus Artist Competition of the USSR, the Soviet Union, arguably the world's most difficult circus competition at the time. She won a lot of stuff. After a long international career that took her to four continents, Elena retired from performing in 2004 and began teaching aerial skills at the Circus Center in San Francisco. Elena Panova moved formally to the United States in 1991, and she is now a U.S. citizen and still teaches at the acclaimed, the iconic in its own right, San Francisco Circus Center. One more quick thing before we start this episode. Victor Fuman, who is mentioned in the bio, Elena mentions her in her uh, interview. She talks about her great coach. I actually interviewed Victor Fuman. He is episode 100. He is an iconic coach. He's my coach now. I love him so much. And if you want to hear how circus really circles back around and everybody's kind of interconnected, definitely go listen to that episode. And you'll also hear him and Elena talked about in other episodes of the Artist Athlete podcast. And you'll start to hear if you listen to enough episodes, like everybody kind of weaves together in this really cool way. So yes to Circus Family, yes to this community, and yes to my interview 
with Elena Panova. Elena Panova, welcome to the Artist Athlete Podcast. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> it's my pleasure, Elena. Can you tell us, the audience at home, who you are and what you do? Uh, my name is Elena Panova, and uh, I'm former a realist. I uh, perform on swinging trapeze for 20 years um, in Russia and all over the world. So now I'm just uh, living in San Francisco and teaching the people um, to the different uh, aerial skills. So, and that's uh, most of the time I'm uh, doing. So Yeah. Nice. Can uh, you talk about how you started circus? Did you did your family do circus? Uh, no, my family uh, wasn't in the circus. Uh, I was born in a very small town in Russia, uh, which is uh, called Muro. It's a very old town, uh, more than 1,000 years old. So um, it's uh, not much there, just mainly churches and monast monasteries. <laughs> so, and uh, uh, like, uh, you know, I'm not as young and I was born in Soviet time and, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, in Soviet time we had uh, every small or big town uh, uh, activities for children, you know, different kind of uh, clubs, dancing, uh, art, theater, and uh, of course, uh, circus clubs, uh, like uh, like uh, youth circuses. So, and uh, I started in the dance company. I was uh, I, when I was seven. That's when I started dance. Some years later, like us uh, for more than four years later. I enjoyed the circus uh, uh, club when I was 14. So it's quite, uh, I already was uh, grown up. But I always want to do something physical, something uh, which is I use my body uh, rather than my brain. So, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, so that's uh, how I started. And um, yeah, and my first act was uh, static trapeze. So... I guess that's uh, that's uh, bar and two ropes uh, attract me right from the moment when I step in this in this uh, place uh, for the kids. So and then there you are. I'm still there on the bar and trying two ropes. <laughs> <laughs> Still to this day, but now, now, but now I'm more down. Just <laughs> <Rusted> it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, you went to the Moscow Circus School. Yeah. Can you yeah. talk about the significance of the Moscow Circus School, especially in? Oh, that's uh, that's uh, it's uh, it's really uh, uh, it's really changed your life, you know. Um, yeah, when I was finishing uh, school, um, gradu graduating from the school, that was the choice of what I'm going to do next, and. Uh, um, the teacher who was uh, teaching this uh, youth circus uh, proposed me to tr try to uh, 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 take addition uh, to the Moscow Circus School professional where you train for profession. So I, uh, of course, I somehow I didn't even think before that, uh, you know, because uh, I was I thought that uh, people in the circus they are very special. They it's really uh, unique people. They are very strong. They're very charismatic. They they everything the best. And uh, of course, I didn't think about myself in that category. So I was just a little girl trying to <laughs> hide <laughs> like monkey. <laughs> so, but uh, when he told me I, I should try, okay, I say I will try. And suddenly it's fired my uh, brain and... Uh, uh, so I went to, uh, I sent my uh, applications. You have to be pre-selected. Uh, you have to send a picture. Uh, they look first of your body type. And then they uh, um, invite you to take uh, exams 
or not invite. It's all about uh, your look first. So how you look, your proportions. So, and um, I went there, yeah, and um, um, that was uh, 1981. Was it your first that you auditioned in Moscow? First, yeah, yeah, in in the school, yeah. Was it your first time going to Moscow? Yeah, that was first time going to Moscow. Uh, and uh, I also went to visit a friend. Um, she was younger than me. I was 17 then. And uh, that's, uh, you can imagine, uh, uh, to from small town, which is uh, 100,000 people, population, to go to the city, like uh, 13 millions. It's just, uh, it's just, you know, I, I look my, at myself back and uh, I'm just, uh, I'm thinking, oh God, how I must be or didn't understand anything or I was too very brave. <laughs> <laughs> one or another because just uh, nev- I never went to out of my town before and uh, right by myself and also uh, take care of the younger friend who was younger than me well, she was only 16, uh, 15 so we two of us went to took the train and uh, went to the Moscow and uh, we arrived 5 o'clock morning of course we didn't know where to go we had the address where the um, school is. But, you know, Moscow is huge. When you get out of a uh, train station and you, we knew you, we have to do, we have to take a metro to go to certain uh, st- uh, neighborhood. So we get to neighborhood and then we start to ask where the school and nobody could tell us uh, and also it's five o'clock in the morning it's not so many people <laughs> outside <laughs> so and eventually uh, uh, a person who was uh, cleaning the street uh, directed us say you go this direction so at least that helped <laughs> so and then we, that we arrived yeah and then that's it. They put us in the uh, dormitory student house. And uh, next day was our first exam, first test. So and there's of course a lot of st- a lot of kids was there. It's a one like a lot, lot. That time uh, uh, selection was uh, it's uh, um, we had like a, on one place ten people, ten people on one place. So. It's, uh, so it's every quite... for every ten people, there was one that would be selected. Only one, yes. Okay, so, wow. Uh, what did you have to do for the audition? I must say it's not easy uh, to pass the exam because uh, actually uh, I was very little and very small, and I am still <laughs> little. And <laughs> it's not that I grew up since, <laughs> but uh, um, but of course when you also looking for the somebody, this uh, very. Uh, like a physical work, uh, you want to believe that this person could handle it. I looked very fragile. And uh, after the first exam, they thought that they're going to, uh, uh, they pass, uh, let me pass on the second test. And they thought that they're going to discharge me after the second test because they didn't believe I have, because first test is again, it's your look. Your proportions, your uh, bone structure, uh, so that uh, all they looking uh, elbows, knees, everything, because you don't uh, like uh, spine, everything, so that it uh, should be uh, right in the body, um, so that then you can do stuff. Otherwise, you can harm yourself. You can injure yourself if you some kind of an alignment. Uh, like for example, if your uh, uh, elbows is hyperextending, for us uh, not extending both ways, not good because uh, one, if you're hyperextended, you can uh, dislocate elbow. If you do a lot of handstands, you can uh, doing uh, uh, like a banki, uh, doing some assault into the hands. Your if your arms in the perfect alignment, uh, you just can uh, injure yourself. So, and that's a uh, like uh, that's very first thing, very strict for the Russian school to. Uh, look at the bodies mm. and then second test was it's to uh, what you can do with <laughs> with your bodies and then of course uh, then uh, um, 
when they ask me to do pull-ups, leg lifts, uh, I was so strong. And then uh, I did pull-ups. Then, then uh, without uh, stopping, they asked me, can you lift the legs up? I lift the legs up and I even let go one hand. I was holding pike in one arm. Uh, so they was like shocked. They were suddenly laughing and uh, like uh, they couldn't, couldn't expect from, from my type of the body and look that I have that strength. So they accepted me. Like I passed second uh, second test, and then third test is the acting. So, um, so that's uh, that's. But they also thought that okay. Usually, when the kids come from the home first year, they put weight on. So if I on first year put little bit weight on, so I would look exactly mm, right. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's uh, uh, that's uh, my uh, was experience with my. Uh, examination yeah but uh, you know in in russia uh, you have to be invited to the circus it's not that just you decide i want to do circus you have to be invited you have to be selected mm. it's uh, different uh, from the like on the way like in, if on the west now they have schools but before like uh there were no schools. So the Moscow Circus is the first uh, professional school was um, in the world. It's uh, all the schools like uh, European or Montreal school. They come much later. Mm-hmm. So, how did you get so strong for your second test? Did you train a lot when you were little? Uh, you know, uh, because I, I think it's uh, genetic a little bit. Okay. Uh, because uh, I, I'm a little bit like my father. Okay. He was the same also. Uh, they, my, my parents are small, uh, small, but my father also was skinny but very strong. Like, uh, uh, like his core was so strong in general uh-huh. hands strong everything and also i spent a lot of time before circus climbing off on the trees i guess it's just again mm-hmm. it's uh, something which appeals to me to be a little bit kind of high to be like a boy to be like uh, all that stuff you know and yeah. uh, so and it's kind of uh, uh, develops your body develops your strengths and when i came to the uh, youth circus I also, I saw was also a little strong already then because mm-hmm. that's already high on trapeze there. Okay, so they admitted you to the Moscow Circus School. They invited you to come. You mm-hmm. started in static trapeze, right? Is that correct? Um, no, in the in Moscow, it, I started in youth circus static trapeze, but uh, in Moscow, uh, in school, you do first year. Uh, uh, many disciplines. Uh, you mm. do all the foundation. You do acrobatic. You do hand balancing. You do juggling. You do uh, aerial. You do uh, uh, tight wire. Uh, you do a lot of things. So all the fundamentals for the circus. So and then uh, second for the second year, you decide in which uh, categories you would go in which. Uh, uh, department like uh, acrobatic department or uh, aerial department or uh, uh, equilibristic or so and so so and of course I decided to go in aerial department okay. so and uh, but then the second year you have to again do you have to do different apparatus you need you go you mainly we did the uh, uh, Roman rings uh, and uh, trapeze and uh, it's a uh, trapeze uh, like a, a swinging, but uh, it's also uh, as for flying trapeze, you would practice the because the uh, swinging trapeze was actually light because that's also you uh, trained for the flying trapeze uh, to uh, uh, to fly. So, and then also you did on the same trapeze, uh, uh, swinging trapeze uh, uh, work as a uh, solo. So there was two different kind of uh, um, exercise, like uh, categories of um, training uh, on the trapeze was, uh, which is one related to the group flying trapeze, one to the solo. I see. Okay. So, and that's all on the light bar. It's not heavy bar. And then when you get all these uh, fundamentals in the aerial, to to the third year and fourth year, uh, somebody has to choose you 
to do act for you. So we have, of course, teachers, uh, coaches. We had uh, um, uh, uh, act directors who is uh, uh, putting idea into your uh, act. And we had the choreographers also. So basically, if you want, you could have uh, three teachers on you for you. One is a creative teacher, director, one is coach, and one is choreographer. Oh, wow. So you had like a technical, like a coach, like you're saying, to teach you yeah. the technique and yeah. everything. Yeah. And then and a the choreographer. Concept, choreographer and the act concept, because it's not the same. Act mm-hmm. concept and choreographer, it's not the same thing. Can you explain the difference between the two? Uh, uh, act concept, it's the, uh, it, uh, uh, if I don't know if uh, in English and American people understand what is regisseur, and in the fr- French regisseur, it's uh, who is uh, directing, like directing the show or directing the act. So created idea for the act. Okay, I want you to be okay, something like a bird, sort mm-hmm. of bird. And uh, uh, they think about uh, uh, image, and uh, visualizing how this image has, how this act should be. And then uh, uh, they take a choreographer, which put a movement according to the vision. So, and of course, you have to first train to get the technique. Yes, yes. So first you train the technique until it's uh, your uh, uh, technique is perfect, and then you put artistry on it, yeah? So that's uh, that's when kind of regisseur and uh, choreographer get involved. Yeah, I think in French it's like a realizateur or a realizateur, a, a real a realizer is what it would be in yeah. English, but that's not really a word. But it's yeah. the like a director, yeah, like you're saying, director, director who is director, ça, yeah. Ça, ça. So, because you know, in the circus, it's uh, some some acts. It's uh, just uh, um, you go, you have uh, you have like a, um, skills, you have a music, and you in very uh, you just have a presence. But there is no kind of uh, theme of the act. So, but some act kind of uh, with the theme, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this theme, uh, it's a uh, regisseur create this theme. Mm-hmm. And the choreographer put the choreography movement into that theme. Yeah. So that's, it's not the same work. And I feel like now in the West, then it's, it's like... Act be- and then, 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 the, then, then it's how act became great. Ah. Uh-huh. You know, uh, if you just, uh, choreographer is, you, at least you have to have choreographer. But uh, uh, to have uh, uh, really great acts. It's more than just choreographer. Mm-hmm. For example, uh, I have I, I wanted to have example, but uh, I, I need to think to have a really uh, good image so that uh, good uh, good that uh, everybody knows uh, uh, the act. Otherwise, it's uh, <laughs> can be. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe I was going to actually ask you for the example to use your own act. Um, and talk a little bit about. Oh uh, yeah, well, I mean of that course. would be easy for you. Uh, it's but yours, uh, so. um, yes, yes. Uh, uh, so uh, it's uh, also there is no recipe how to create an act. Uh, it's uh, everybody basically comes uh, hmm. different way to that. When uh, when I started, uh, when is uh, my uh, uh, there is. Uh, uh, teacher who decided to do act for me, a solo act. and uh, But unfortunately, she has to leave and uh, she passed me to her friend who is a uh, uh, regisseur. She, that's her job is to get con- uh, create a, like a theme, a concept for the act, what it should be, right? Um, so, but, uh, you know, uh, you have to uh, know also what you're going to do technically to create a concept. So uh, the, the the regisseur who uh, took me first, her name is Teresa Durova, and she's from the uh, big dynasty of Durovs of Russia. 
uh, Russian trainers, clowns and uh, animal trainers. So uh, we need to find. We, we had to find uh, uh, somebody who actually can coach me. So and the also um, she didn't have a, you know specific any idea of what my act is going mm-hmm. to be. I, just we just met. Uh, she just uh, saw the girl. That's it. So and. Uh, uh, there's uh, some teachers in the school uh, which is uh, was uh, just for the technique and one of them who was just arrived uh, to school was very new it's a uh, victor and uh, when we uh, spoke uh, with her we thought that it's better somebody who can young and uh, who can invest a lot of time <laughs> into the work so because you know when you uh, like uh, have uh, sometimes teachers is uh, family mm-hmm or not young anymore, children, and, uh, you know, it, it can be always kind of uh, uh, limited that with the time which uh, they can invest, uh, yeah? Uh, so, and we thought that uh, the young, and, uh, it's probably it's the better, so we can spend as much time as to train as possible. So, you know, and uh, so she, she spoke to the Victor, and uh, she, of course, she agreed, she wanted to, work you know she wants to to teach someone to, yeah you know. so but of course he didn't know much about trapeze <laughs> she thought that it's also barred to ropes <laughs> that's about it <laughs> so and then uh, when we start to so we then we were three of us already so and but it's uh, was was not so um is to start because uh, uh, Teresa, she's a regisseur. She doesn't know much about Ariels. And uh, she knows about elephants, actually, a lot, <laughs> because she trained elephants. Not little <laughs> Not girls. Not humans on the trapeze. <laughs> Not on the girls on the trapeze. And Victor, he uh, also didn't know anything about trapeze work. He also, also from the gymnastic, but that's the great thing was about him because uh, he was from gymnastic. He knew how body works. And he also, in the circus, in circus he worked in the fixed bar uh, for some years, like I think five years. So, uh, and uh, even he didn't know uh, on just what to do on trapeze. He knew mechanic, how body would move. You know, so and uh, we tried in the beginning uh, different kind of things, and uh, it's kind of uh, uh, we get uh, idea and from Teresa, she may think that could be good fun to do on trapeze or something, but it's uh, everything is uh, like uh, it just didn't work. It's just we were wasting a little bit time in the beginning, and then after that. Uh, um, I think uh, uh, Victor decided, okay, I'm going to library, take a book, <laughs> gymnastic on the trapeze. And like, uh, really, in, in the circus school library, uh, where the, all the circus books. So he took the book, we were uh, uh, reading the book and to get through the, all the book, what is uh, what is repertoire was in the book, uh, in the trapeze. Um, and uh, we, we start to practice all that stuff. Okay, I have a. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Who wrote this book? Because Victor also talked about this book. No, but the, the thing is, uh, we have plenty of people. You know, uh, circus like uh, circus school was uh, created in twenties, nineteen twenties. 1920s mm-hmm. and a lot of people was writing and putting uh, uh, the you know and some teachers uh, uh, some instructors was also publishing books is the technique like we had uh, 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 prof- they all like we call it like sort of professors they uh, like we don't call teachers they a little bit more in the status yes <laughs> Status. So uh, they also uh, publish the books as well, and uh, uh, so on hand balancing, mm. on uh, 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 like work on the trapeze. Uh, you know, like it's a lot of uh, history since uh, creation of the school in twenties. I think nineteen twenty six, or if I'm not mistaken, or twenty four. 
to the I came in the 1981. Just imagine 60 years of experience, right? So there are people who is uh, uh, writing and publishing. So yeah, and uh, we actually quickly finished the book. And then we had to do something else rest of the maybe year or year and a half. <laughs> so, and then the, when the fun started, so we start to, okay, we already had some kind of idea what you do on the trapeze and some kind of uh, things, basic things. And then we, based on these basic things, to try, try to do different things. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then by accidentally, there is some uh, kind of uh, technique was developed, uh, like twists. Yeah. It's uh, purely accidental. Pur- it's uh, accidental. Really? It's not was intentional. It was, uh, Victor was asking me to do something and uh, I did it co- incorrectly and uh, I uh, get out of the situation. I just made a rotation full rotation and uh, I cut myself there basically. Uh, yeah. So, and that's uh, suddenly uh, became, wow. Then that's where we should go. Like what we should, that's, we should start practicing and we start to practicing. And that was like from sitting to the ankles first thing. Okay. So that's how it's done. So now people come from all over the world to train with Victor, to learn to do something that you did by accident one day. And that started by accidentally. Yes. <laughs> and, um, it without any intention. So, uh, yeah, it, because, you know, uh, he was open-minded, and mm-hmm. uh, so, uh, and then of course he tried to also little bit uh, technique of the uh, uh, fixed bar, little bit in the beginning, uh, you know. Uh, so and uh, so that's uh, where it started. When it started, all this uh, and uh, that time uh, in the rehearsal, that's what we start to do. Uh, first, it's uh, sitting. Uh, a twist from sitting to the ankles, then from standing ankles. We did also start to do some assault from hands to hands. Uh, um, so uh, that's all start. We also ha- start to have like from the hands to the half turn to the hands, uh, half of pirouette. No, it's all, it's a different uh, uh, back, back swing mm. and front swing. So all this is started there in uh, 1982. Wow. So the question, and then after that, what you question is, what's next? It's uh, what actually you will do in your act, because uh, that's the other thing which is with the that time doing a swinging trapeze. It's no longer you don't you you. Uh, it's a tradition in Russia. You have a little cable from your belt to attach to the corner of the bar. That's your that's your safety. So and uh, it's uh, uh, like a single line, uh, a, a line launcher. Uh, uh, people you work now. That's we start to practice on it, on single line like this, and mm. then after that you have to switch it to the little cable, which is attached just to the bar. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, all these uh, 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 tricks which you have to do, you have to do it on this uh, small cable. Nobody holds you on the safety line mm-hmm. anymore. So that's the, that's the actually most challenging thing from entire all the training process. Switch from the launcher somebody uh, hold like not even hold like support you you know even the weight of the line feels Mm -hmm. support because Mm -hmm. rope is heavy it goes up it goes down and it's kind of automatically elevate you Mm -hmm. this is it's like uh, nothing it's like your entire line uh, entire uh, in uh, you by alone, alone in entire space. Mm. So and it's just you. So even somebody like Victor didn't hold you on the safety on this line. Just hold it, just in case if you fall, not help. Yeah. It's still you feel you like a, it's somebody spotting you. 
and here is a uh, here you are you just you trapeze and the little cable which is attached to the corner you uh, you do your things was difficult switch line to do pirouettes on that uh, that on that safety but eventually uh, you get through and then i guess it's that's the what is make uh, uh, circus people special you know if you make mm. it made it if you made it through if you uh, get through your challenge uh, physically physical challenge or psychological which is most difficult to get through this psychological challenge then you in if you not you <laughs> if you cannot uh, if you cannot you not in, cannot be there you know and of course now we, how I, did you get through the psychological challenge how i did Oh, yeah. oh, it's uh, uh, <laughs> something you know. We try, we try different things. Uh, there's one of the things you know. Also, as uh, you may know, uh, or uh, people may saw my video or even picture, I didn't have uh, leg protections for the, my mm-hmm. legs. You know, leather. So it's basically ballet slippers. And I had a ankle wrapped with the chest uh, for support, like a, like sort of uh, uh, st- stabilized the ankle, like a bandage, basically. It was under my uh, uh, slippers and uh, like a little white sock, which is make a, a, a same look, like it's kind of mini, like looked like mini boots. Um, and uh, of course, you catching. I was catching by ankles, purely by ankles, not by back of the uh, knees. That's also difference in the technique that time was. That's how everybody was doing ankle catch on the trapeze, catching by ankles. Uh huh. So, um, and of course, uh, 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 dynamic. Uh, like uh, you have to go further down to your bottom of your uh, legs to catch, not just middle of the legs. So you see, it's much more further out. And of course, it, it's uh, it's scary. It's scary. You never like you <laughs> not sure if you're going to catch it or you're going to miss it. It's just uh, you, you're not stopping yourself with the basically middle of your leg. Like where the, you're above the calves, you don't stopping. You're there, there. You go and continue going down to the ankles. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, that's the challenge. That's challenge. And then uh, we had to uh, create a kind of. Uh, uh, that's where the regisseurs came to that. Okay, we had uh, like sort of uh, piece together. Uh, let's we put music. Let's we put character. My first character was kind of uh, this clown. Uh, like a eccentric character, and uh, because because of that, um, sh- uh, we could I could have a sneakers, and uh, <laughs> I could uh, I had a little dress or something, uh, and sneakers, and uh, we were this clown. He was I'm just kind of a, a girl who is uh, like a boy girl, basically who I wore that time. Uh, like I uh, want to climb, doing a lot of things, and clown was uh, was kind of scared for me and to try to uh, get me down from the trapeze so that I'm just uh, uh, don't kill myself there. So that's kind of was a team of the <laughs> of the uh, my first uh, uh, act for the in circus school, and that because I had also was able to wear sneakers, I kind of feel my feet are bigger. <laughs> I could catch better. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's uh, that's kind of helped a little bit <laughs> for my mind so then after that it starts to get a little bit better um, mm. I start to be able to do uh, tricks on the uh, my safety line yeah and then there was a little bit time when uh, I um, about the twist, uh, so I was a little bit uh, hesitating about the twist uh, for some time. Uh, but uh, something which is, and I find something in myself to uh, uh, 
a stimulate uh, i find some st- uh, stimulation to myself to go through that it's like a, to basically please someone to make a, uh, someone to be proud of me and that was of course victor so mm. uh, i was thinking about that so that uh, he would be proud uh, and uh, that will, that helped me to uh, get the twist uh, on uh, my uh, self ah, yeah. okay to have him be proud of you. So it's just like admiration and uh, 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 respect to my teacher just uh, just made, made, me, made me do it. Amazing. So Amazing. and then after that, of course, uh, uh, was uh, that's then you move on. Yeah. And then uh, mm. after that, we uh, changed the uh, act concept. So then I start also uh, think about myself less like a, hooligan boy then more like a uh, girl and uh, and uh, the uh, Teresa uh, she helped me to kind of uh, love myself like uh, I am like body and uh, mm. uh, convince me that actually my body is beautiful that <laughs> it just uh, sticks <laughs> skinny sticks <laughs> <laughs> So it's uh, you know you know all the people uh, 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 play great part in in me you know it's all those people and but unfortunately I didn't have choreographer <laughs> which is I'm saying that also you should have choreographer in the yes. for that because choreography it's like it's a dance you know you spe- specialize in the dance you know how to dance and how to teach people to dance. So we didn't have that. So how we just was uh, 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 three of us, uh, coach and the director, but uh, all choreography uh, more or less comes uh, from the uh, regisseur and uh, myself, basically. It's how mm-hmm. I felt to be able to move. So that's how I move, moved. But uh, uh, I always dreamed about have a choreographer too. But it hmm. didn't happen with my choreography made by me. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it seems like you did okay without one. You went to the festival in Paris. Uh, I guess so. I guess so, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Because after that, next uh, student, Victor's student, was Marina Golovinskaya. And then they get, uh, they had Victor, Teresa, and choreographer. They they did actually how it should be. <laughs> and with me, we, we did just like experiment. You were just the guinea pig the whole time. That's 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 how it's how, it's, how was it that how was it. So, can you talk a bit about what happened after you graduated from the school? You went to these festivals. You, I know it's a bit hard because. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, after the after the school, you we would be we uh, automatically automatically would be accepted to the uh, uh, circus uh, Russian circus organization, which is used to call Soyuz Go Cirk which now is a rose circle, yeah. And uh, you automatically accept it. So, and they send you to work. Uh, you know, we, in Soviet time, we had the 72 wow. circus buildings. 72 civil circus uh-huh. building in Soviet time. Uh, now it's uh, something probably like uh, 50 because uh, the uh, now it's... Uh, 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 it's a uh, Russia uh, Federation and uh, some of the republics, but uh, many republics became independent, like Ukraine, Belarus, Tajikistan, Azerbaijan. It's all independent, and uh, so. But uh, all was before. It's uh, all was uh, Russia, Soviet Union, and uh, everywhere was circus building. So you just go from one circus building to another. Uh, basically, you kind of move uh, every month from one city to another. In big city, like capitals, you staying like uh, six months. And the rest, you just go one month every uh, city or uh, big town. Usually it's uh, like, it's a million, uh, population million when we had the uh, buildings. Okay, wow. And the rest is a tent, a traveling tent. Mm-hmm. But now it's a, different because it's less 
And I don't know how system works now, Rosirka and school, how they connected. Before, they was really tied together. You just go automatically. Mm. They take your act automatically and give you job. Mm-hmm. This is also very different than the West, where even if you graduate from a school, you don't necessarily have work. No, yeah, yeah, it's it's totally different. Yeah, and then uh, when I start to travel, first year, then after that, uh, I had invitation uh, to do Paris Festival. So, uh, and the next of my second year of my uh, uh, professional life. Uh, I went to the Paris Festival. It's when I did the yeah, festival. And uh, yeah, and then after that, it's... Uh, and uh, when you get out, um, you show yourself on the international stage, then uh, uh, your career is moves. Yeah, you're not just in Russia anymore. You're everywhere. Yeah, you know, even in Russia, actually, uh, before even Paris Festival... Uh, uh, I went to already two countries, uh, Cambodia and Mongolia. Uh, uh, still, but uh, you know. But after that, when as soon as you get to Europe, as soon people can see you, so they they want to take you. Yeah, amazing! And you won the Paris Festival, also. Not to embarrass yeah. you or anything, but that happened. <laughs> 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 I, I hate to skip over your career so much, so we won't. Um, can you talk about some of your favorite uh, jobs that you had while you were performing? Uh, jobs, you mean contracts? You mean the contracts? Yeah, yes. uh, because the job, it's uh, only my job was swinging trapeze. That's the only job I did. Mm. Yeah. So, yes. but the contracts, of course, different. And uh, um, uh, you know, you do. Uh, you know, that was my uh, living. You take uh, all opportunities which is given. Uh, so uh, you work uh, everywhere. And of course, uh, some of the contracts not the great, some of them better, some of them, uh, uh, you know, I must say, it's uh, nothing, the world is not perfect. It's always uh, something, you know, uh, something <laughs> good, something not good, you know. But uh, uh, best, uh, best, of course, uh, contracts, it's when you have a good living living conditions and good performing mm-hmm. conditions so that's uh, always best of course uh, money has to come with it too but uh, you know sometimes <laughs> yeah. money can come and you have very bad uh, 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 working condition for example mm-hmm. you know like uh, mm-hmm. uh, not so uh, clean or not so um, you know you still do that it's your job uh, you have to do it, and uh, and and it's also your life uh, when you work in circus. It's your life. You choose that, and don't expect everything will be great. You know, it's it's kind mm-hmm. of the uh, so. But there's uh, great places to work with, like uh, like uh, you can you like uh, you just dream to work there, like at Kni, for example, in Switzerland, uh, or Buglions in Paris, or, or uh, uh, you know, uh, Big Apple used to be in the New York. So all this, uh, it's great places, you know, but it's not just the great places you work on. You place also work in other places. That's what you make mm-hmm. you, what that's make you a professional. Mm. Uh, you do your job, no matter what. No matter if you like, if you if it is dirty <laughs> to walk to the stage or not, you still do your act <laughs> and to do, do it like it's the uh, best you ever done. <laughs> so yes. no complaints because you love Amazing. it. You know, you have to, if you love your thing, what you do, you sacrifice many things. Yeah, for sure. Oh, hey there. I just wanted to interrupt this interview real quick to just say one real quick little thing about myself, which is that I am not only the host of the Artist Athlete podcast. No, no, no. She is a businesswoman, and I run a whole company dedicated to the education and inspiration of circus artists. That goes from people who are just doing it, weekend warriors as a hobbyist, recreationally, or if you're a professional, you've put in the hours and you need more resources. Go to the artist 
thegreatestathlete.com. There are a ton of recorded workshops, online manuals and eBooks, everything you could possibly need from me and from some guests on this show about everything from nutrition to training your shoulders to really specific aerial moves that you need to master. Again, theartistathlete.com. And just because you went there from listening to this podcast, use code podcast and get 15% off your entire purchase. That's right. Theartistathlete.com. Use code podcast at checkout for 15% off your entire purchase and have a great day. Back to the episode. Brought you to San Francisco. Well, we lived in New York, and uh, I still was performing. And uh, my uh, uh-huh. Dominic was uh, associated director of Big Apple Circus, but uh, he was already uh, working there almost twenty years. And uh, uh, and basically, uh, San Circus Center. Uh, uh, the executive director who was there, Pat. Uh, and Louis, artistic director, was that time. Uh, they wanted to bring uh, Dominique uh, as creative director to Circus Center uh, to just uh, to develop it. So um, I follow him. Uh, he moved uh, in uh, 2003 to the San Francisco because Circus Center brought us here. So okay, Dominique is Elena's husband, yeah, by the way. Husband. Just for everybody. So you came to San Francisco with your husband Dominique to teach. No, I, I, I just, I still was performing at that time. I still was performing. Okay. So and uh, gotcha. most of the time I was performing in Europe, um, and uh, uh, he started working here in two thousand three, and then I still performed one more year, and then. Uh, uh, I start to teach. Somebody just asked me to take a girl on the hook to to teach, and uh, I start to give lessons. And then, uh, and that time already, I was almost twenty years uh, being performer. So in that time, uh, I uh, uh, suddenly realized that actually, uh, you can I can teach, and it can bring you a satisfaction. Which is I never believed before. I I thought that uh, you know uh, <laughs> teaching uh, how can how can this bring you satisfaction? How, I mean not the, as much as you perform yourself. You know you're giving yourself one hundred percent, and uh, you see immediately reaction like an audience. They appreciate you, and that's uh, that's uh, you know that's feelings. Uh, not describable, uh, this, you know. And uh, I didn't know that uh, you still can have that feelings uh, uh, from teaching, yeah. And then I just discovered it then, and, uh, and then I thought, okay, then it's time to change the page. So I turned the page and uh, start to write another page. So, and I started to teach teaching. When yeah. you started to teach, did you just say, okay, stop performing? Or did you do both for a little no, while? No, I, I, I realized that I cannot do both. I, I realized that I, I have to, uh, uh, because when you train and perform yourself, you're giving yourself 100%. And uh, even more, I already was giving myself to the, uh, something so and uh, oh, when I start to teach and still train uh, I was still practicing I am like uh, I understood that I cannot do both or I have to do one or another because uh, splitting myself in two directions uh, cannot or I everything collect to myself to to give it away on the performers or I have to give away everything what I I, I know to someone, so this is like mm. this is one or another. It's uh, it didn't work with me both things and performance and uh, so I realized that pretty quick, and then that's why I stopped like very quick uh, to perform mm. because uh, uh, then I couldn't uh, give a student you know much which I sh- should. Uh, so okay. and uh, you, when you start to teach, you're giving everything, everything you know, everything you like, every nothing you're living for yourself anymore. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So when was the last time you were on a swinging trapeze? 
Have you done it recently? Well, I went to the China. Yeah. Uh, it's 2000. Ah, uh, that's less performers. For, for less, you mean less performance? Or uh, since I stopped? Oh, uh, well, I'd love to hear about. Oh, less performance. Less performance. Uh, uh, you know, I went to China. Actually, China. I didn't know that was my last performance. Wow. I, uh, so I performed, I finished uh, uh, China's contract. And then uh, when I came uh, uh, back to San Francisco, I was, was still practicing. And uh, then somebody asked me to uh, teach, take a girl. And then I start to teach. And then I stopped practicing, basically. Wow. And I never went to perform anymore. And uh, so my uh, last performance, uh, I, I didn't plan. I didn't know that it last uh, performance. And... Um, uh, decision decision made uh, make uh, made uh, just uh, uh, after, and uh, since then, since two thousand four, I've been on trapeze only three times. I think on swinging trapeze three times, only three times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, there's also so when uh, it's uh, uh, I had a studio like uh, I stopped performing, start to teach, and then uh, five years uh, later, uh, I had to just uh, uh, show student how to be able to uh, use the rope to stop her swing. So and uh, I went to the trapeze, I swung, and uh, I saw that. I never left it. Like uh, mm. it's like uh, I was start to pushing swing, and uh, it felt like uh, I I just did it uh, yesterday, mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> my practice, <laughs> so or something. So it felt like uh, it's so natural, so absolutely <laughs> normal. So that was uh, that was amazing experience. And then uh, again, uh, some years later, I get another time up and uh, uh, again showed something which is uh, like a uh, very uh, like. It's not even I was showing how to uh, do trick or anything. Just uh, like a more or less technical, like uh, how to stop swing mm-hmm. if somebody give you rope, or uh, how to slide on the rope from the trapeze down on the you know on the sleeve on mm-hmm. the rope like uh, Russian do. So something like this, and uh, and that's it. I've been like uh, now I'm what uh, eight, seventeen years teaching. So yeah, it's just uh, I've been just a few times really, <laughs> and uh, I didn't want to go there because uh, you know um, if you if you do you do it, but to go just for fun for like for kind of pleasure, it's too too. It's like a too dear to me. It's uh, it's like bi- like Bible. You like uh, don't uh, uh, go on it and start play with it. That was you you made your uh, living with it. it uh, you made the uh, uh, like uh, it was your bread and butter. So yeah. you, you don't play. If you stop, you stop. It's not like you know. You know, sometimes people ask me, uh, do you still for fun something? No, I don't do for fun. That was my career. You don't do for fun, like, <laughs> things which is you, like, was like, it's your uh, uh, cathedral, <laughs> you know. Yes, yes, for sure. Yeah, like, uh, to go to the dentist, uh, retired, and then suddenly he go to root canal for fun. <laughs> you don't to root canal for fun, right? <laughs> You know, why would you trapeze for fun if you've been doing it? It's your job, your profession, your... Uh, well, and I, I have to ask you this, Elena, ha, because now you teach and you teach people who do it for fun. Yeah. And uh, I'm, you know, I was also teaching people who became per- performers, like uh, really professional people. Yes. I also, they, I, teach, I taught both of them and I had the program which is uh, for people who want to be professional. And... Uh, it's totally different, mm. and uh, uh, it's totally uh, totally different uh, uh, thing to teach people for profession, to teach people for the fun. There is a, a success measure different, and satisfaction measure differently. Mm-hmm. So it's not uh, uh, it's not the same thing. And uh, I'm happy to do both uh, because uh, um, you know it's uh, um, people who uh, are doing it for fun uh, just imagine people like they're all adults they never did that 
with anything before. Most of them never trained before. And then suddenly you give them experience which they would never have them in life, uh, like uh, if not basically accidentally, like uh, when they like suddenly see something. Uh, so it's not that like something everyone intentionally want to go and to do, right? Uh, accidentally discover there's class or something and uh, come try and uh, suddenly they like. And uh, so basically they all comes like this and, uh, and uh, you give them to test something which you was your life, you know, and uh, it's, uh, it's something special something special to um, to them and uh, and of course to me too you know and uh, when you people teach professionally uh, it's uh, if uh, somebody is uh, be able to become a, a circus performer and uh, do spend life uh, and uh, on on this uh, then you feel you not wasted your uh, school years you not wasted mm-hmm. your uh, uh, performing years, mm-hmm. so that you passed someone to mm-hmm. carry on. So it's totally different. Mm-hmm. It's uh, you know, in both in both ways, uh, you you really feel you, your satisfaction and uh, uh, yeah, and something uh, there's you do some purpose you you, you have a yeah, purpose sure how much do you keep up with what swinging trapeze has become now the bar is getting heavier the rotations are faster everything oh yeah yeah well uh, i keep up uh, you know you yeah. know uh, of course uh, i see videos and sometimes i see performance sometimes i go to the festival and um, and uh, of course uh, you know you you, uh, you cannot uh, stop the development and uh, progression you cannot stop but uh, it's um, uh, you know it's something like uh, you know we cannot know everything there's something which is something which you don't know and uh, our uh, uh, should be intention just to learn as much as possible and uh, develop more easy way to do it basically right to a certain <laughs> technique <laughs> so that something you yeah but it doesn't mean that you have to uh, sac- sacrifice your technique for some kind of uh, invention or anything. No, it's just, uh, uh, you know, of course, obviously, it's a heavy bar. It's I started on he- heavy bar. Even I start practice on light bar. After that, the uh, act was created on very heavy bar. And I came to the West. Everybody was shocked how heavy it is. And for so many years, my bar was still heavier than most of the people get. Uh, bar. So, because uh, I remember I was in Paris uh, something uh, uh, even 2000 and uh, um, one uh, uh, French uh, swinging trapeze performer uh, he also <laughs> he get on my bar and uh, and he realized how much heavy my bar uh, compared to the, his bar, but it's already was developed. Already, it's a f- people were swinging on heavy bar, so and now it's of course even heavier. My bar is became too light now. <laughs> <laughs> and now its bars is like a, you know, like a stein trape, you know, where you do handstands on it. <laughs> That's how yeah, heavy sure. it is. <laughs> you know, and uh, um, you know, and then it's uh, uh, then you start to do. Uh, uh, difficult, different things uh, on that high. It's, they make you even uh, more possible to do other things. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I have one more question for you for this interview. Yeah. Um, which is, what advice would you give to yourself at the beginning of your career? Advice at the beginning of my career? Um you know, uh, it's hard to say. I uh, well, I guess uh, I would uh, say I mean, I wouldn't uh, in, that's not even the beginning career. I would uh, uh, say to the uh, everybody um, who is uh, learning and uh, um, uh, who is going to continue learn? It's just uh, 
admire your teachers and appreciate your teachers. So mm. because they giving you so much, it is changing your life. Mm. And that's uh, uh, if I would do even more of uh, <laughs> admiration and uh, respect and care about my teacher, I would do that. Mm. Uh, because uh, if you have a great teacher, it's like really changing your life. Mm-hmm. So just admire the people who uh, teach you. Um, <laughs> That's what I would say. That's fabulous advice. Elena, thank you so much for taking the time to come on today. This was amazing. Yeah. So amazing to hear your story. Thank you so much. Okay. Ugh. I was happy to do that. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. it's my job. <laughs> That was my interview with Elena Panova. God, I love interviewing these icons like Elena, like Rodley, like Richie, like Elena Lev. These people who see circus as their not only like what they do, but as a way of life, as a mentality, as just the only real option that we have as artists is to do this crazy thing called circus. I totally can relate to all of these people and it's just so thrilling. Something I love about Elena's story is she starts to talk about the physical, right? At the very beginning, she's talking about how she was a tiny little girl and how in Russia, in Moscow, you had to be invited to go to the circus school. You couldn't just walk into a a facility like we can in the West and be like, hey, I want to be a circus artist. You have to be invited. And there are certain things that you can't really help in those uh, situations, like your body proportions, that determine whether or not you can engage in the activity. And that's crazy to me as a Westerner who's like, this is an art form and all bodies are valid and all bodies, if you work hard enough, have a way of expression and can you know, really innovate, you know, it doesn't really matter your proportions, you make your artistry based on your body, you don't make the body based on the artistry. But in these times, it was a little different. But what I loved is even after all of that, even when they choose the people who have the best body proportions, quote unquote, best, all of this, Elena still talks about these psychological blocks, how it's not enough, even at that level, to be so physically competent, because if you don't get through those psychological challenges, she says, you won't do circus. You have to meet it, and you have to figure out your way through it. And it was really funny to talk to Elena about this when I asked her, like, how did you get through your psychological blocks? And she said two things, one of which I thought was very cute. She said, um, I wore sneakers, right? She had a costume in which she kind of played a little tomboy. And so because she had sneakers, she could help her ankle catches. And I just, I did think this was thrilling and like, it seems so simple and like not actual advice, but in a way, like I do think that if you're not well equipped to your apparatus and the tricks you want to perform, obviously it's going to be a stumbling block for you. So psychologically equipping yourself with the best of the best, the best rigging, the best hardware, the best gear that you can does have, I mean, it has a very real and practical safety component, and it does also have a very real and practical psychological component where you know that that's one less thing you have to think about so you can really take care of what your job is, which is the tricks. And then the other thing she said, which really touched my heart, was um, this desire to make her coach proud. And I think any of us who have a coach who we really care about uh, have this desire. It's almost like this weird like parental, like you want them to be proud of you. And I also feel that way about my audience where I have this desire to make my audience proud. And I'm sure Elena could maybe feel that way as well. So psychologically, it's almost like instead of earning their trust, you have this basic belief that they really want you to succeed. And because they want you to succeed, you also want to succeed. And I just think that's a really healthy way to approach the coach-student dynamic rather than this like idea of fear or discipline or, you know, other ways. Obviously, you do have to be disciplined to do and perform at this level, but um, 
yeah, what Elena was talking about with wanting to make her coach proud. I think I can really relate to that. And I'm sure others can as well. And if you can't, I would find someone who, you know, isn't going to disparage you, isn't going to like wait for you to fail, but rather prop you up and encourage you to succeed. I think psychologically that's so empowering. Speaking one more thing, and this is something that I find from the other Elena too, this idea of like fun in circus. And I just have to say something about it. In Elena Lev's interview, if you go back and listen, she talks at one point about how her mother hated the word fun and how it didn't matter if circus was fun. And Elena Panova says something very similar. She says people ask her if she now does trapeze for fun. And (laughs) I wrote down this quote. She said, why would you do trapeze for fun? She said, it's my job. It's my career. When a dentist retires, they don't start doing root canals for fun. And I think that this is a distinction and something that I really wanted to bring to the podcast from the very beginning is that that is an outlook on circus. There are people out there and um, it, it's a way of life where this is your job. This is your career, your métier in French. Um, it, it, and that has a very sacred place for people. And I think sometimes hobbyists or recreational aerialists, that can be really hard because it almost makes them feel like what they're doing isn't valid because it's not their job or their career. And I just want to give permission for both outlooks to exist in the same space. Elena herself says she's very happy to teach professionals and she's very happy to teach recreational students. You know, like there's no judgment on her end if you want to do this for fun. But for her, it was her job. It was it's a passion and a place in her heart that it's too hard for her to just do for fun because of the hours she spent, because of how she was primed from a very young age to think about circus and think about trapeze. So I just wanted to throw that in because I do think that it's an outlook that kind of can get twisted sometimes and put value judgments around it. But it really is just another way to approach circus. You can do it for fun. You can do it as a creative outlet. You can do it as a source of empowerment, as a source of fitness. And there are also many people out there who do it because it's their living, who do it because even when they're working in a bad environment, even when they have to step through horse shit to get up to their trapeze, even when they're tired and in pain, they still do it because it's their job and they love it. So all that is to say, Elena Panova, I can't thank you again enough for coming on the podcast, for being the person you are. You are incredible. If you want to follow Elena, she's on Instagram at elena.panova.trapeze. And she also teaches online classes for the San Francisco Circus Center. So get in on that wherever you are in the world. Like, learn from Elena Panova. It's an incredible opportunity. As for me, for aerial training tips and inspiration, you can go to uh, Instagram at the underscore artist underscore athlete. I'm on Facebook, the artist athlete. I'm also on TikTok, the underscore artist underscore athlete. And if you love what you are listening to every single week, please, 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 patreon.com slash the artist athlete. Costs are rising as I do longer episodes and I need to be able to afford them, which means that I need to reach out to my community and ask you all to keep supporting, keep going. And um, yeah, so we can keep making this thing happen. Thanks for listening. Um, For the next few weeks, I'm going to do a little something different. I'm going to talk about the business of circus, all sorts of uh, angles of business. So if you've ever wanted to grow your Instagram, if you've ever wanted to be in a show, if you've ever wanted to produce circus, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you listen in because we've got a whole bunch of really cool guests and really cool content coming at you. And I will talk at you next week, friends, fans, and foes. The Artist Athlete Podcast is supported solely by donations from people like you. Here's what some of those people have to say. Hi, my name is Noah and I do hand balancing. Hi, my name is Woody and I do Leo walk. Thank you for listening to the Artist Athlete Podcast. Hi, I'm Freya. You can hear my whole story in episode 50 of the Artist Athlete Podcast, but I'm here to tell you about something else that I do. I'm a qualified health and nutrition coach. I help people with sleep and body confidence, among other things. You can see everything I have to offer at wildguidance.com or follow me on Instagram at wildguidance. Hi everyone, I'm Dominique, a ground acrobat, trapeze artist, and coach, currently bringing circus to the extremely cold but very beautiful Northern Ontario, Canada. Circus has changed my life and I'm so grateful to everyone in this community. 
Find me on Instagram at Dom Upside Down or my website, domupsidedown.com. Aloha, my name is Beth Russell and I live on the beautiful island of Maui, Hawaii. I am an aerial artist and movement instructor specializing in chakra yoga to keep me balanced and grounded. I play with silks, trapeze, lira, rope, acro, aerial yoga and dance, slack lining, pole, bungee, and climbing. Really anything that goes up and allows me to explore 3D space. You can find my dedicated aerial page on Instagram at Maui Aerialist. If you find yourself coming to Maui, let's play. Hey there, friends, fans, and enemies. This is Chris Alston, Patreon of the Artist Athlete Podcast. Straps artist and Lyra performer and acrobat out of Greenville, South Carolina. So if you're ever passing through, make sure to stop in and see me and my friends. We have a wonderful space and we'd love to see you. Hi, my name is Erica Lee. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm an aerialist. I teach performing arts to elementary school during the day and do pole and swing and rope by night. I really, really like the Artist Athlete podcast because it gives me a lot of circus goals to look forward to. It gives me a lot of insight on what's going on around the world in circus and that's why I'm Patreon. Hello all. Thank you for tuning in to the Artist Athlete podcast. I am Opal Schwartz from Minneapolis, Minnesota. If you're ever in the city, feel free to stop by the Aviary Minneapolis. It's a great time. With that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week and goodbye. Hey there, artists and athletes. This is Andy Smith, owner and artistic director at Saltaire Circus School in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. And I want to thank you for contributing to the Artist Athlete Podcast. If you ever find yourself down in Florida, come check us out. Whether you're an artist, athlete, or someone ordinary just looking to be extraordinary, we got a place for you.